do it. Okay. I was only gonna do one chapter, but the next chapter is called Train Killer Scorpions. That has to be good, right? Also, if you get your guns wet, do they still work? But I can't question this story too much or it will like, you know, it's one of those things. You can't question it too much or you'll be like questioning forever. The list will just go on. Okay, let me get into it. Okay. The first room Solid Snake opened on the second floor held a prisoner, but it was not Dr. Petovich. It was a member of the squad. As he released the snake man, Haley re uh, received this message. Listen to resistance fighter Jennifer on wave band 12048. 12048, according to Commander Sal's instructions, Justin Haley's transceiver had been set on 12033. Now he reset the wavelength and attached the antenna almost at once. Solid Snake heard loud and clear a woman's voice coming over the transceiver. It, was, it wasn't a voice that he'd heard before. It was not Diana. Jennifer here. I'll set up the rocket launchers. Come and get one. Over. Without delay, Haley went in search of the rocket launchers, following Jennifer's radio signal by rotating the antenna and using it as a direction finder. The radio transmission led him around corners and through a long corridor. At the end of the corridor was a row of giant packing crates. Solid Snake realized that the crates might hold the rocket launchers, but most likely were another of California Taffy's fiendish traps. Which of them contained the rocket launchers? Which was the trap? Up to now, Haley had always stayed away from the middle of everything he'd encountered in Outer Heaven. The middle crate. The middle truck. But now he had a feeling. Instinct told him that at this stage of the game... <laughs> Colonel California Taffy would be ringing in some changes. He thought for the first time the middle crate would be the safe one. And it was. One more time, Solid Snake's instincts had served him well. The middle crate held the rocket launcher. Behind the crates he saw a door, partially hidden behind one of the pillars that held up the ceiling. Using keycard 6, Haley got the door open. Inside was Dr. Petovich. At last, Solid Snake took an eager step forward, then stopped. All of his highly developed snake man instincts told him that something was wrong here. He smelled a trap. Where were the guards? There ought to be guards inside a room with a prisoner is vitally important to the Metal Gear Project, this Dr. Petovich. Taking one of the mines from his arsenal, Haley rolled it gently across the floor to where the doctor was sitting, tied to a chair. The man didn't move, not so much as the flicker of an eyelash. This isn't the scientist, Solid Snake said to himself. It's a dummy. A booby trap dummy. Solid Snake fired a burst from his Mac 2 and the thing exploded. Shattering into wires and stuffing. <laughs> Haley hurled himself to the floor and covered his head the same instant that the mine under the dummy's chair went off with an ear shattering blast. As he picked himself up and brushed the fragments from his uniform, Justin Haley discovered in the debris on the floor key card seven. The radio began to beep at him as control signal was received again. Haley heard the same female voice. Jennifer here, I have a compass for you. Follow my signal. Over. A thin high signal began to emanate from the transceiver, and a second or two later it was matched by a transmission coming from one of the locked rooms in the hallway. Using keycard 4, Solid Snake located the compass. The room next door was unlocked by keycard 6. 
It held no prisoners, nothing but a small bottle. Cautiously, Haley opened it, held it away from his nose, and with his other hand fanned a little of the fumes toward his face, and took a sniff. Solid Snake recognized the odor of the chemical from his training with the snake men. It was an all-purpose antidote to a number of deadly poisons, oh lord. Quickly, he <laughs> tucked the little bottle into his uniform belt. Uh, suddenly, Justin Haley heard the heavy thumping of running boots. Terrorist guards were on the way. He had to get out of there. He raced down a corridor, through a back door, and down a set of stairs that took him directly into a desert. A desert here in the jungle? Impossible. At least in nature. No, it had to be man-made. Another trap of California taffies. Heaven only knew what awaited Solid Snake in the sands of a terrorist, phony desert. Oddly, Haley felt elated. The presence of the unlikely desert here in the middle of nowhere led him to believe that he was much closer to Metal Gear than before. The more difficult the obstacle, the nearer to the goal. As Justin Haley took out his compass to lead him across the desert, he heard a strange whirring noise. It sounded like something shuffling across the hot sands, something huge and dangerous. Before he could react to the sound, three giant creatures slowly came into view. Haley was nervous. These were trained killer scorpions. California Taffy used them to destroy his enemies, and now they were coming at him. Poisonous stings, or I think they mean stingers, held high in the sting position. <laughs> What a horrifying sight! Even a man with the courage of Marine Captain Justin Haley had to turn pale. The trained killer scorpions were mutants, raised to grow to between 15 and 17 feet high. Oh my god, we're like a 50s movie now. Their poison stings were, or stingers, were as long and thick as a javelin. Oh lord. They had eyes that bugged out of their heads on stalks, and the stalks kept twisting this way and that, searching for their quarry. And they'd caught sight of Solid Snake. He could tell because a horrifying, high-pitched buzzing came out of the three of them, the sound of evil excitement. Slowly, they turned in his direction, and slowly they moved toward Haley. Their bodies were covered with scales, and the scales made a sickening noise as they dragged across the burning sands of the desert. The curled tails of the trained killer scorpions were raised high, poised to strike, sting, and kill. They were slow, but what was the need for haste? Where could Solid Snake go? The desert, seemingly stretching around him for miles, was empty of shelter, and the sun was hot enough to broil a man alive. He had nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. But the scorpions loved the desert heat. They thrived in it and grew to enormous sizes. All they needed to survive was furnace heat and the frequent opportunity to make a kill. Justin Haley would have to stand and fight. He sorted through his weapons as the trained killer scorpions came closer. He could smell them now. They smelled Howl. Solid Snake fired again and again until the clip of his Beretta was empty, and still they came. They came, dragging their <laughs> scales over the burning sands. Nothing seemed to stop them, not the grenades or the Mac 2. He braced himself, dropping a rocket down the, <laughs> down the breach of his rocket launcher and aiming through the site. Wait a second. I'm trying to just picture this. <laughs> Solid Snake slammed his hand on the trigger button and the rocket exploded from the tube. <laughs> one, one scorpion exploded in a noxious burst of matter. He fired again. The rocket launcher was hot to the touch. The disposable firing tube wouldn't take much more use. A miss, another rocket 
launched, then another, and the second of the trained killer scorpions blew apart messily. But the third one kept coming at Haley. Nothing appeared to phase the creature, not even the sudden explosive death of its brothers. Its stinger waved over its head, eager to plunge into Solid Snake's heart. <laughs> Loading the rocket launcher, Haley hit the trigger button, but it misfired and the rocket wasn't launched. Wow, what a, that sucks. Was the rocket launcher still operational? There seemed to be no stopping this evil creature. Ammunition of any kind showed no effect on it. The scorpion would have to be hit head on with everything he had. Solid Snake waited until the monster was almost on top of him. He waited until he could see the color of the creature's beady eyeball. It was green. <laughs> then, and only then, did he turn and aim the rocket launcher dead on target. But would the launcher fire or misfire again? Boom! The last explosion caught the giant lumbering creature full in the chest. With an eerie high scream, it blew into a million poisonous fragments. Solid Snake was clear. Okay. <laughs> the next chapter is all about Ellen. Apparently. I hope she's not annoying or I'm gonna throw a fit. <laughs>